Hello, it's uh, Bruce here. Uh, if you watched last week's video where I was trying to decide whether a uh, really beat up Mantua shifter was worth refurbishing or not, you heard me say that I had a total of five of these units and a couple of them were not in running order. And uh, since they all typically have the number 99 on the side of the cab, I'm going to have to refer to each one by some characteristic they have. I could say that this is uh, the Pennsylvania, uh, because I think it's the only one that's marked for the Pennsylvania. However, because a previous owner had done a nice job of uh, detailing the various domes and smokestack and headlight and so forth and gold paint. I'm going to call this one Gold Dome. And so I decided to work on Gold Dome and all I've done so far is uh, remove the tender so that I can work better on the unit itself. Uh, this is of a vintage where the locomotive shell itself is plastic. Uh, you can see a better picture of the gold painting and so forth that the previous owner did. Uh, if you've never seen the uh, plastic insert that uh, Mantua and Tyco uh, included on their units uh, that show details of uh, you know the, back, uh, the uh, controls for the engineer uh, and the door to throw in uh, coal and so forth, there it is. Uh, these are nice units and the frame and so forth is still all die cast. So I've started to loosen uh, the only screw that is holding these together, which is up front here. I will take that screw out. And I want to get to uh, get to look at the motor and the brushes on the motor, so that's why I'm doing this. That's a long screw. And now we can remove the the boiler. And I don't want to uh, wreck anything to do with the lights, so we'll just keep these near each other here. Uh, let's come over to this side. And I'll try to remove this brush so we can look at the uh, both the brushes and the commutator. If you look at the top of uh, the motor, you can see the springs that hold the uh, brushes in place. So that's uh, half of the spring and here's the other half. And all you have to do is uh, take either a needle nose or tweezers and uh, move that and the brush fell right out. So here's the brush. Not bad. Um, it's got a uh, you know a groove worn in the middle of it but uh, there's still quite a bit of life left in uh, this brush. Let's see if I come back out a little bit, it'll focus better. So yeah, I'm just, uh, that's not bad at all. So we'll set that aside and just look at the commutator. Um, so here's the commutator. It's actually pretty shiny, but I'll go over it with my uh, fiberglass brush. Cleaning it up a bit as we turn it. It looks good. And let me get a fresh toothpick out here. Uh, 
And I'll just uh, run this down the separation between the different parts of the commutator. See if there's any carbon buildup in those. And you always pick up a little. And of course, carbon is conductive, so if uh, it builds up far enough, uh, it can span the gap and uh, that's no good. Alrighty, so uh, I think I'll put the brush back in after just getting any uh, corrosion off of it, a little 600 grit paper to make better contact with everything. And reinsert it. that up and bring this spring back. All right, I'll fiddle with that off. All righty, Mr. Fumblefinger's back here. Um, Everything's reassembled. The headlight wire is soldered back in place, and we'll just give it a try here. And she's in reverse. And there she is forward. juice here and we'll see the headlight on a minute. There she is. Everything's cleaned up, oiled, greased. All contacts cleaned. Looks good. Just going to put the tender back on. Uh, one of the things I would mention, and uh, if you didn't know it, is that uh, one of the reasons why these little guys run so well, besides the fact that uh, you know they have their pickups uh, spread between one side of the locomotive and the other side of the uh, tender, which helps them get through bad spots on your track or the points on a turnout, is that this is a five-pole motor. They put five little dandy five-pole mo uh, pole motors in these things, which. Uh, give it a much better uh, low speed control. So I'll put it back together and we'll take a final look. Okay, it's time to address the pickup wheels on the uh, tender. And uh, what I'm going to do is use uh, my Dremel with a felt wheel and a little bit of uh, a light abrasive that is called Jeweler's Rouge which is used to polish jewelry. And we're gonna just uh, attack those four pickup wheels. I think I'll turn it around so that uh, they're on my side. And let's see how this works. Put it on the lowest speed first. And Seems to be buffing them up rather nicely. We'll do a comparison in a second and then finish with this wheel.
Alright, let's see what that looks like. I'll zoom in a little bit on it. And that's about as close in as I'm going to be able to get. But I think you can see the difference between this wheel that I just buffed right here and the wheel behind it which is not buffed. So I'm going to continue on a minute see how this works out and then I think I'll make sure any residue of the rouge is taken off with some uh, isopropyl alcohol when I'm done. That's good. One for number three. I'll pick up a little more rouge. That one's good, and that the last one. Okay. So we'll see how that works out. You know on these uh, old tender pickups it's typically easier to clean up the wheels on the uh, locomotive if you can get the motor going than it is to uh, clean up the wheels on the uh, on the tender, so that's why the buffing wheel works out so well. Okay, we'll be back. Okay, one uh, last thing I want to do on this tender before we try it on the track is to remove the trucks and just clean up a little bit of tarnish uh, on the pickups. here where the screw goes through. So we'll just see if I can get this through. Okay, ah, it's going to interfere. I have to do it with a little bit of 600 grit. Just Cleaning that up a little bit, getting any tarnish and gunk off. And the same thing on the underside. That I think I can get with the with the file. And we'll put that one back in. And do the other one. Oh, come on.
Okay. And we'll do the same thing for this back one. Put a bigger screwdriver on that. bit of 600 grit up here a little bit of file work on the bottom and see if I can find the screw It rolled to the furthest distance away, which is par for the course. And if you weren't watching this, you wouldn't believe so many things could go wrong. Let's see. Make sure that the pickup wheels are all on the right side. Okay, now let's just try a continuity test with my multimeter here. And this is the wire that's going to go over to the terminal on the motor that wheel wheel set two wheel set three wheel set four so i'm just putting one probe on the wheel pickup wheel and one on the wire that's going over to the engine so all of those are connected and that all is well with the world there Let's just try some power. So, we'll first start from the pickup wire. There we go, and now we'll go to one of the wheels here. All is looking good. Ready to put on the rails and see how it goes. Well, little gold dome is put back together and laying upside down in the cradle. I just wanted to point something out. I've already uh, talked about the fact that these little guys were equipped with five pole motors, which certainly helps with the running, <clears throat> especially at lower speeds. Uh, but over time, um, there was a number of variations that Mantua made with the shifter. And uh, one of them was because they went from a total die cast uh, cab and boiler assembly to plastic cab and plastic boiler assembly. And uh, therefore they had a loss of weight. And so they started equipping the shifters with one uh, wheel equipped with a traction tire which you can see here on uh, Gold Dome. Um, sometimes when you get these, because those dry up, as a matter of fact, this one is 
starting to show some cracking and I'll replace it. But uh, here's the uh, one that I worked on a couple weeks ago that I did a video on. And if you look at this wheel, you see there's no remnants of uh, the traction tire left. So I found a source for those and I'll be buying some and uh, replacing them. To replacing them, you do have to uh, remove the side rods and uh, then snap the uh, traction tire over and then uh, put the tie rods back on. So it's a little bit of a project, but not too bad. But if you go back in time further to when they were all uh, die cast, like on this old bruiser, um, and you turn it over, you will see that the four wheels are uh, simply brass and do not have uh, a groove for a traction tire because they had enough weight. Um, I have yet to tackle uh, this guy. You can see that from the condition of the wheels. But it is uh, in pretty good shape for its vintage. So uh, there you go. Another thing that, if you remember, <clears throat> maybe you don't know, but all the old Varney uh, Little Joe engines always had a V for Varney cast into the uh, smoke box in the front. And in this vintage, uh, on the shifters, the number board always had an M for Mantua. And uh, that did continue up into the uh, plastic stage until they started putting the uh, headlights there. All right, I just wanted to comment on those traction tires. Well, when you see them all kind of lined up, it does seem a bit excessive, but uh, I do like these little guys. So here's Gold Dome. Let them run back and forth a little bit, yeah, and finish up this video. And there she is, running pretty darn smooth. Alrighty, until next time. As always, if you liked the video, you can give it a like. If uh, you wish, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. And uh, we will see you soon. Thanks for watching.